Hello and welcome to The Measure of Whiskey where we discuss all things Scotch whiskey. There are only ever three raw ingredients in any bottle of single malt Scotch whiskey. So what is it then that makes them taste so different? Right, so the Scotch Whiskey Association, that's who governs Scotch Whiskey. They state that in any bottle of single malt Scotch Whiskey, there can only ever be three raw ingredients. Malted barley, water and yeast. That's it. So how then can each individual distiller create such a different expression from the next one? Right, so first of all, the most obvious difference is probably going to be in the flavour profile whether or not a whiskey is peated or unpeated. I've got a Laphroaig triple wood here and I've got a Glenfarclas 15. These probably couldn't be further apart with regards to end of the scale when it comes to peated whiskies. But how then does a whiskey become peated if you're only allowed those three raw ingredients? Certain distilleries will use peat when they are malting their barley, when they're drying it. And traditionally, peat was used as a heat source, not so much now, but it's still used in order to extract the peat reek or the smell from the peat so that it can be infused into the barley, which then goes all the way through the distillation process and the maturation process. And that's where you get that smoky, medicinal smell and taste from a peated whiskey. And each of the distilleries who do use peat in their whiskey will go to certain measures to make sure they have exactly the right amount of peat in the dram. And that's referred to as PPM, so phenolic parts per million. Laphroaig is pretty heavy on the peat. The most peated whiskey is a Bruich Laddie Octomore. Um, yeah, their PPM is insane through the roof. Another reason may be the water that's used throughout the process is it a coastal distillery where the water is briny and a little bit salty or is it a highland distillery where the water is nice and fresh now that's a bit controversial because some people believe that the water does not make any difference to the final expression i will leave you to make your own opinion on that the third ingredient the yeast the strain of yeast that is being used can have an influence on the final expression. Now there are lots of different variables that go into the process of creating single malt scotch whiskey that have an effect on the final expression. We certainly don't have time in this episode to go into each one individually, but here are a few others that have a real direct influence on the overall smell and flavour of the dram. In the distillation process, the copper stills, the spirit stills, the size of the copper still, the shape of the copper still, you know, how much reflux is going on inside that copper still. All this has a massive impact in the new make spirit that comes out at the end. Where the cuts are made as it's coming out of the spirit still, you've got the heads, the hearts and the tails. Distillers want the heart. So where are they making the cuts? Is it closer towards the head, closer towards the tail? This is going to also have a real impact on the final flavour profile of the dram. And of course, the maturation process. This will have the biggest impact on the final expression, final smell, final taste, final mouthfeel, everything. What type of oak is the dram being matured in? Is it American oak? Is it European oak? Is it Mizunara? Is it Japanese oak? And what was previously in the cask? Is it a virgin cask that had nothing in it? Or is it an ex-bourbon cask? Is it an ex-sherry cask? What type of sherry was in it? Is it Oloroso sherry? Is it Manzanilla sherry? Also, the location of the barrels when they are being matured. For example, the Laphroaig distillery is right on the coast and many, many people believe that the seawater is battering against the side of the distillery. All that salt, all that brine permeates through the barrel and has a massive impact on the final expression of Laphroaig. Okay, so that's not an exhaustive list of all the different variables that can have an influence on the final dram. Now hopefully that's given you some topic of conversation for the next time you're having a dram and you can think to yourself, why does this taste the way it does, even though it has exactly the same raw ingredients as the bottle next to it?
Slanj. This city's gonna be a mess